SpaceX is ramping up the testing of its new booster after conducting the longest static fire test yet. With the mission to Mars in mind and Artemis II fast approaching, the company is aiming to have its Starship rocket ready for flight within the next year. Let's take a closer look. Elon Musk, the billionaire founder of SpaceX, plans to build a full-size city on the surface of Mars. This would be a city open to regular people, not just scientists and researchers. People interested in moving to Mars could pay for their flight with a loan. Once there, people would be able to pay off the loan by working in anything from iron foundries to pizzerias. Musk declared at a 2016 conference that there would be labor shortages for a long time. It's an idea that arguably bears resemblance to 19th century American company towns where employees lived in a city owned by their employer. Especially in the early days, Mars may not have many choices for local employment, and you'll need to pay off that loan for your flight. This city would be free to govern itself on its own terms, as indicated by the Starlink Internet Service Terms and Conditions released in October 2020. This appears to stand in contradiction to the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, which states that the launch origin country is responsible for subsequent space activities. David Anderman, who served as SpaceX's general counsel when the terms were released, suggests that the two documents may be set on a collision course. Musk estimated in 2019 that it would take around 1 million tons of cargo to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. Assuming it costs $100,000 per ton to send cargo to Mars with the upcoming Starship, that would put a Mars City's price at around $100 billion. At the high end, Musk estimates it could cost around $10 trillion. SpaceX may not stop with just one city, however. Paul Worcester, the principal Mars development engineer for SpaceX, said at the 21st annual International Mars Society convention in August 2022 that SpaceX could build multiple cities. The idea would be to expand out and start not just with an outpost, but grow into a larger base, not just like there are in Antarctica, but a village then a town, which grows into a city, and then multiple cities on Mars. Musk claimed in 2019 that a return ticket could cost around $500,000 initially, dropping to $100,000 over time. Musk's goal in 2016 was to reach a ticket price of around the median price of a house in the United States. That would suggest people could sell their houses to move to Mars. In 2017, Musk outlined an aspirational plan to send two cargo ships to Mars as early as 2022. It would then send four ships at the next closest approach, two crewed ships and two cargo ships in 2024. However, in March 2022, Musk suggested that a more likely date for humanity to witness the first humans on Mars would perhaps be 2029. It's also possible, however, that Musk was referencing the moon landing that took place in 1969, making it 60 years between the two feats. Mars and Earth are at their closest around once every 26 months. The distance between the two at this time reduces to around 33.9 million miles. As SpaceX has yet to even host its first orbital flight with the Starship, it seems unlikely that it will send the first cargo ships this year. If SpaceX adjusts its plans to a more realistic late 2020s deadline, it's perhaps more possible that Musk could indeed meet his goal. The private space flight company, which regularly launches cargo to the International Space Station with the Falcon 9 rocket and will soon launch astronauts up there, is currently building an interplanetary spacecraft for Mars. Known as Starship, the rocket spacecraft combo will be able to launch 100 passengers and large amounts of cargo to and from the Red Planet. Before Starship can launch to Mars, it will start off launching commercial satellites, followed by a crewed flight around the moon in 2023. Although SpaceX has not given a timeline for its first missions to Mars, SpaceX founder Elon Musk has said that the first Mars base could be up and running in 2028. And while Musk shared some eye-catching artist illustrations depicting what he called Mars Base Alpha as an intricate network of buildings and infrastructure, SpaceX's plans for the Red Planet are not quite that extensive. For its very first Mars missions, SpaceX will land at least two uncrewed cargo ships on the Red Planet before sending any humans there. Those cargo missions would bring supplies such as life support systems and power generators that the first astronauts on Mars will need when they set up camp. The first uncrewed Mars missions will also be tasked with confirming the presence of natural resources that can provide fuel for future two-way missions to the Red Planet. SpaceX wants to use water ice from the planet's surface and carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere to refuel starships on Mars, enabling the rockets to return to Earth.
After those first two cargo missions, SpaceX will launch two crewed missions alongside two additional cargo-only flights to begin setting up a propellant production plant. At that plant, water and carbon dioxide will be converted into liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which fuel the rocket's engines. So, while SpaceX intends to set up a transportation system for humans and cargo traveling to the Red Planet, the company won't be building an entire Mars base on its own. Musk has laid out his vision to create a million-person colony on Mars, but to establish that colony, SpaceX will have to work together with NASA and the agency's international partners and other commercial space companies. Several companies have already begun designing concepts for Mars habitats and have proposed orbital outposts similar to NASA's Lunar Gateway, which could serve as a waypoint for Starship and reduce the amount of fuel needed for return trips to Earth. Recent reports have stated that NASA is interested in the Starship. However, the agency won't be fully committed to using it for its first human Mars missions until SpaceX has proven that the vehicle is ready for flight. NASA is also considering using its own space launch system, Mega Rocket, for Mars, but the development of that new rocket has faced years of delays. Starship itself is still in the design phase and is constantly updated with new designs. SpaceX has also begun testing a small Starship prototype called Star Hopper. Experts suggest that SpaceX is still on track to meet its goals and send humans to Mars by the end of this decade. That time frame likely has something to do with the fact that the next suitable launch windows, based on the positions of Earth and Mars, will occur in 2024 and 2026. But while SpaceX is known for its ambitious ideas, Musk also has a history of offering ambitious timelines. Before we'll know when the first Starship missions can launch to Mars, SpaceX will first have to prove that the rocket can get there safely. After the initial launch, the rocket is responsible for delivering the Starship crew capsule to orbit around the Earth. After it has done so, the booster will detach and steer itself towards a soft landing back at the launch pad. While this feat seemed almost impossible at first, SpaceX rockets have been doing it successfully for several years now. The next stage would involve the booster picking up a fuel tanker and carrying it into orbit as well. This fuel tanker will then be used to replenish the Starship for its voyage towards Mars. Once en route, the craft will deploy solar panels to harvest energy from the sun in an attempt to save precious onboard fuel for what will be an exciting and groundbreaking landing on the Red Planet. According to Musk's vision, these crafts and their crew will remain in Earth's orbit until a planetary alignment brings the Earth and Mars closer together. This is a window that opens once every 26 months. The long-term plan for SpaceX is to have many hundreds of spaceships waiting in orbit to depart en masse as a part of the Mars Colonial Fleet. Perhaps the most important part for this entire plan to work is the reusability of the boosters. Musk's plan revolves around making sure that each spaceship is capable of being reused as much as possible. He states that there is no way to have a self-sustaining colony on Mars without reusability. It's a fundamental part of the plan. He also adds that if the wooden sailing ships from the old days were not reusable, the United States probably wouldn't have existed. SpaceX estimates that it will be able to use each of its rocket boosters a whopping thousand times, each tanker a hundred times, and each spaceship twelve times at least. The first missions are only estimated to carry around 100 people on each ship, but gradually that number is expected to increase to more than 200. According to these estimates, putting a million people on the surface of Mars could take anywhere from 40 to 100 years after the maiden voyage. The reusability of the rockets also means that once there, the crafts can then be used to return to Earth whenever needed. After a few uncrewed cargo supply missions have already landed on Mars, the human phase of colonization will be finally ready to begin. One of the biggest hurdles that stand in the way is the Red Planet's notoriously thin atmosphere. NASA had to be extra careful when landing their Curiosity rover on the planet, which weighed a mere 2,000 pounds and is a tiny fraction of the total payload that the manned missions will carry. With such lofty plans for the future, a lot depends on the performance of the Raptor engines, which are at the core of every new rocket used by SpaceX. The company makes regular upgrades to the engine to improve its efficiency and reusability. In recent months, SpaceX has used two variants of the engine, with the newer one dubbed Raptor 2. The company states that Raptor 2 includes a large number of performance and reliability improvements over the previous iteration. The Raptor engine is a full-flow staged combustion cycle engine that runs on super-chilled liquid oxygen and super-chilled liquid methane, both of which will power SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, Starship. 
The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. It is the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed and the first to leave the test stand. The first stage of Starship, called Super Heavy, will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades Raptor. The Starship currently hosts six total engines, three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and three sea-level gimbling engines. As research and development continue on the Starship, the latest news from SpaceX is that a new prototype for the vehicle has successfully undergone the longest static fire test of its engines ahead of its first planned orbital test flight. SpaceX fired seven engines on its Starship Super Heavy Prototype Booster 7 on September 19th, marking the highest number of the company's new Raptor engines ever tested at the same time. To prepare for Starship's maiden orbital flight, SpaceX has been conducting static fire tests with increasing intensity in which one or more engines are ignited while the vehicle remains stationary on the ground. A static fire test is a rough equivalent of revving a car engine in neutral, with this particular one lasting around 10 seconds. SpaceX is still awaiting a launch license from the FAA for the first orbital test flight of Starship. The company cleared a major hurdle in June with the completion of an environmental review that allows the launch to go forward but requires dozens of modifications to the mission plan. Once SpaceX has the green light from regulators, Starship will be able to launch from Starbase and take a brief trip to orbit before performing a splashdown landing in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii. Super Heavy will separate from Starship shortly after launch and attempt to land on a modified drilling rig in the Gulf of Mexico. In addition to its inevitable role in getting humans to Mars, all of this is leading up to Starship's eventual participation in NASA's Artemis program to return astronauts to the surface of the Moon as soon as 2025. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about the Artemis mission. Do you think SpaceX can get the booster ready in time for Artemis 2? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.